Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this little video where I'm going to be kicking off this series talking about automotive relays and just the different applications, different ways you can use them and some some are simple ways and some are more advanced ways. So I'm starting off with this video, it's a more simple way and then the following videos will just get slightly more complex and scenarios you can actually use them, things you can actually do with them. So check out those videos or if you want, uh, check out the description. I have a video popping up here that I have a, a relay actually taken apart while it's connected to a car and you can see the inside workings of it and what actually goes. I, I, I trigger it by hand instead of triggering it electronically by way of a switch which you can see in this diagram. So instead I'm, I'm triggering it by the inside of the relay and you, maybe you would, if you're more of a visual learner like I am then maybe that would help. So check that out. It might answer some questions about how the relays work. They're very simple. They're very, whoever made it was a very ingenious person. I mean, they're amazing little, they're amazing little devices that you can do some pretty crazy stuff with, but it's at the same time it's a really simple device. So jumping right in with this video, I'm going to start off and I'm going to talk about why you'd want to use it. Why would I want to use a relay? And then I'm going to go into the, the actual wiring of it and talk about how it works a little bit after that and then just recap everything. So you can follow these, these quick links that I have on the side of the video just to jump throughout the video I have the section of the video highlighted that I'll be talking about so uh, just navigate through the video until you see the the part where I'm talking about what exactly what you want to listen to or talk well listen to I guess because you can't see me so jump through find that spot if you want why would I want to use an automotive relay what, what how would it benefit me if you're if you're thinking that like why would I want to use a relay versus just running a wire straight from my battery all the way through into a switch and then out to the light bulb that I want to power and then boom the light bulb comes on hey I flipped the switch the light bulb came on I don't need a stupid little relay actually it's far more efficient if you do use a relay and let me explain to you why if we were to wire it that way if I were to take a wire and I were to run it here to a switch and I were to go off and I were to power say fog lights so I could turn my fog lights off I could turn them on all that stuff what you would have to do is you would have to run a heavy gauge wire from the battery into that switch and over to the bulb. And if you have to run your wire from the battery where it is in your engine bay all the way into the interior of your car where the switch is and then out to the bulb, not only will that be a heavier gauge wire to control your fog lights, but that would have to go through a more heavy duty switch like a 30 amp switch or something like that. And those aren't tiny switches, they're usually a little bit larger, like maybe an inch in size. So they're not ridiculously large, but they're not as small as they can be if you were to use a relay. So if I were to use a relay instead, how I would wire this is I would wire that heavier gauge wire in through the relay over across to this, let's switch the relay on, over to that side. And it would come out pin 87. I'm going to talk about the different pins later on in the video if you want to jump ahead of the wiring. This is still talking about why and I'm going to go out and I'm going to power that bulb. It's going to turn the bulb on, but how is this going to know to turn on? Well, it's going to know to turn on because this little thing here with the squiggly lines is an electromagnet that is triggered by a switch that you have, and this little gate over here just happens to be metal. So when the electromagnet's triggered, it pulls that gate. Nothing physically touches anything else. These two sides are completely separate from each other inside the relay. They don't touch each other electronically speaking, they just touch each other physically with plastic and everything else that's held together inside of there. And since this is just an electromagnet, then you can have a very, very tiny gauge, like 24, 26 gauge, ridiculously small gauge wire running to this electromagnet into the switch inside your car, and you don't need a 30 amp switch anymore. You can get away with using a very, very, very small switch that doesn't even really have an amp rating because it doesn't matter. All it does is is carry a small load over to ground. And when you flip it on, it basically just connects this electromagnet to ground and then you have, like this battery is ground over here, right? I didn't draw that out. But when this switch opens a path to ground, you have a complete circuit. That electromagnet turns on and this gate moves, powering your light bulb. And because of this, you can put this whole relay assembly, which is like a little one by one by one cube thing. You can put it close to the to the fog lights that you want to power, thus saving all this money and wire that you didn't have to run all the way over here to the switch. So that is why you would want to use a relay. It really it saves money. It it saves 
money on electrical wire because copper isn't cheap. You can buy aluminum wire, yeah, but aluminum wire is a little bit cheaper than copper wire, but you're still going to have to run a heavy gauge wire from your bulbs to the fat switch that's inside your interior and then over to the battery. It's easier to run the wire if you just get a small wire that runs over to this toggle switch. So now getting into the actual electrical wiring of this. What do all these little pin numbers mean that are all over the place? 30, 85, 86, and 87? And 87A? What, what is that? Why is there an 87 and an 87A? Now, 87 versus 87A, now that's the difference between the 4-pin and the 5-pin relay. I'm going to talk about that at more at the end of this, this wiring segment because I'm going to go over more specifically how the 4-pin relay works first. So you can completely ignore this whole wire, 87A, and this little spot over here. So this is what the bottom of the automotive relay looks like. This is what the pins look like when they're arranged. Like if you're looking at it like this, then you have 87 that would be laying flat, and then 30, 86, and 85 all arranged up, to, up and down. So just to make this as simple as I can, the electrical wiring of this relay, 85 and 86, those are used for this electromagnetic coil over here. They trigger the electromagnetic coil only. You can wire them to where 85 is positive and 86 is negative, or you can wire it where 86 is positive and 85 is negative. It doesn't matter. They can be flipped around, wired either way. It's just an electromagnetic coil. There's no polarity with it. You can wire it backwards if you want to. What most people do, now that's the electromagnetic side, right? Now what most people do is this pin 87 and pin 30, that carries your circuit, whatever you're going to power. So whatever you want to turn on, in our case we were talking about the fog lights down here. So pin 30 is generally what people would use to have your power source. So the power would come from the battery, it would go over here, and it would go to pin 30. And then going out to, de to the device to be powered, you would have pin 87, it would go out to your fog lights that we have drawn there that actually look like a house light bulb. So that is the simplest way that you can explain the wiring of an automotive relay. And it might make a little bit more sense, like I said, if you jump to that, that video that I talked about in the beginning of this video where I talk about my automotive relay that I hooked up to a car and I, I took the cover off of it and I triggered it manually. So you can go and you can check that out. It might make a little bit more sense if you check that out that way. So, okay, so this is a four pin relay, right? I have one, two, three, four pins being used because we're ignoring this guy in the middle, right? But what if we're not gonna ignore him anymore? So now, what's a 5-pin relay? Believe it or not, a 5-pin relay has one extra pin. <laughs> and that one extra pin is this pin 87A. So 87A is what is normally referred to as the NC position, which is a normally closed position, which means that there's a, a connected path on the inside of the relay. So this is a closed circuit. And since it's a closed circuit, that bulb is on and that's its natural state or its normal state so normally closed or NC. You'll see it abbreviated sometimes on the bottom of the relay it'll 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 say engraved into the plastic it'll say NC and NO. Now NO is its normally open state and if this one is closed right then this one is going to be in the open state. So N.O is normally open and when it's open it's off essentially if you could think of open as being off and when it's off this bulb is not energized the circuits not on so the four pin versus the five pin relay they're the same thing except in the four pin relay where you would have this is just this section that I just circled is the off position and a five pin relay that's now something that can be used. Now the, the problem with this and where, where you wouldn't really use it in this application where you have like fog lights connected down here, what are you going to connect when the fog lights are off? And why would you have something that's always on when the fog lights are off? That doesn't really make a lot of sense because there's other ways you can use relays and they're just taking advantage of the, the position that this gate is in. So when this battery, so you just have a, you wouldn't have a battery connected over here unless you actually want something to always be on whatever that situation may be. Recapping all this, going over to the legend over here. So 30, 
We said 30 is our power source. That's how you would wire power coming in from the batteries, how most people do it. You can wire it backwards where 30 is is uh, is the, the device getting powered and then 87 is where the power source comes in. You can wire it backwards. It'll still work that way. It's not going to change anything. If you're not doing anything really advanced, the circuit will still work. You can swap 30 and 87 around, right? So, talked about 30, talked about 87. Now, 85 and 86, that's what we talked about with this electromagnetic coil. You can wire them backwards. This one can be positive or it can be negative. And if this one's positive, then this one has to be negative. And if this one is negative, then this one has to be positive. It has to be wired like that. Anyway, that's it with this video. Um, really simple, really straightforward. This is just a basic switch, um, basic electromagnet, basic gate, <laughs> basic battery, basic bulb. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it was informative. Um, like I said, leave, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this video. If you want me to do another video on another type of relay setup, something that you're thinking, how can I do this with a relay? Hey, leave that down below. I'll see if maybe I could put it into a video or I could possibly just explain it. Uh, explain it in the comment box in a reply. So thanks a lot for watching this video though. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and God bless you guys.